Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Ryan and today we're going to be talking about temperatures versus the electronic speed control. Now when we talk about temperatures we're going to be talking relative to the maximum temperature that you should expect to see out of your speed control, the minimum temperatures, and then we're going to talk about applications. Uh, very similar to what we talked about in the last video that we did where we talked about temperature versus brushless motors. ESCs is probably one of the more easy ones to understand. It's pretty straightforward in terms of temperature versus application of the electronic speed control. Next week we're going to be talking about batteries. That is a lot more complex so stay tuned for that as well. So let's get started. When we talk about maximum temperatures of our electronic speed control we are talking about a temperature of 160 65 Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius. This is going to be the absolute maximum that you want to see to get a reliable setup within any sort of RC application that you are operating within. Now there's something else to add to this in addition and that is many manufacturers will place a thermal cutoff right built inside that electronic speed control. Although this is a great safety feature for your electronic speed control where you, you can help It'll help you stay out of trouble. It is also something that you should not rely on. And what I mean by this is we want to make sure that we're being responsible, understanding the temperatures that we're seeing out of our components as we run them in order to stay below those maximum thresholds. So the recommended is 165 Fahrenheit. You may see certain ESCs that are able to go higher than this. And of course, anything higher than the 165 is only going to reduce your reliability. Now let's talk about the minimum operating temperature of our electronic speed control. The minimum operating temperature of the electronic speed control or ESC is going to be very similar to what we talked about with brushless motors, except it's even better. With an electronic speed control, as long as you are operating your radio control vehicle where you feel comfortable, that electronic speed control will also be comfortable. The minimum operating temperature of the speed control really doesn't exist. Actually, the colder you keep that electronic speed control, the better it's able to operate. Thermal resistance within wires or within electronics actually increases as things get hotter. So if you're able to keep that electronic speed control cold or cool, then you'll be able to increase the reliability and also increase the performance. Now let's move into applications of temperature versus our electronic speed control. Now if you're in the bashing scene or you're just having fun and just running for fun, then you will want to make sure that you stick with the biggest electronic speed control that you possibly can physically fit into your application. Now what is meant by this is if you need to have 50 amps running to your brushless motor, a 100 amp speed control is going to be able to be more thermally stable, especially because you have big overhead. And what, what the big overhead is referring to is the 50 amps in excess. You have a draw of 50 amps and you have excess of 50 amps to get to that 100 amp maximum of the speed control. This is going to keep your electronic speed control cooler and it's also going to keep it more reliable. Now if you're in the racing scene this doesn't exactly work out in all situations especially if you're operating something like a plane that has a very minimal amount of space inside of the compartment that's going to house this electronic speed control. In that situation you are limited, that is the design, that is the intent and you will have to get the speed control that's going to match your setup. For example, you always want to have some headroom above the amount that you plan to draw of the motor. So if your motor's drawing, let's say now a 60 amp example, you want to have at least 75 amps uh, for that electronic speed control in order to have a sufficient amount of headroom. And that's a common setup even with ready to run applications. So you have that 75 amp, ESC operating a 60 amp load that's fairly tight but you do have some headroom in case there's any problem or binding within the motor. This will just help you stay out of trouble and keep your system reliable. If you do have minimum headroom between the operating current and the maximum current of the speed control that will mean that your temperatures are going to be higher in nature. And because of that, you should pay more attention to the heat and make sure that you have sufficient air cooling to that electronic speed control. Remember something, it doesn't matter if the electronic speed control has a number of 75 amps that you can continuously draw from it if your ESC is going above the maximum temperature. If you exceed the temperatures, 
it will destroy the components regardless of what they are rated for. In fact, many ESCs do recommend that their specifications are with a very specific amount of cooling in addition to that. So you have to make sure that there's airflow or there's water flow if you're operating a boat. Those are the tips that will help keep your system reliable. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to make sure you check out the next one that comes next week. It's going to be about the lithium polymer battery first temperatures. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one on Monday.